Silver Belt 400, proudly brought to you by Nissan. There you have the top 10 starters for Saturday's main event. Four production vehicles and six special vehicles dominated the top placings, with first and tenth separated by 1 minute 46 seconds. Crews woke up to a cold, misty morning, which guaranteed that visibility would be a huge problem in the early part of the Nissan Sugar Belt 400. Frantic last minute preparations and friendly smiles only served to mark the free race tension. How did some of the main contenders feel about the challenge ahead? Well, I think it's going to be a hard front and uh, we're going to have a big fight with all the big guys here. So, uh, especially in the morning with the mist and the dust, so I think we're going to have a big battle. Yeah, unfortunately, yesterday on the time trial, the rear springs did sag and we changed it to a new set and it broke in the eye, so between the two packs we built one pack, so we're just simply going to nurse the car. Actually, we held up with the sun master and at one stage we overshoot. And, uh, you know, with a short time trial like this, you always try to make up time. And the last six years really tight and I, I get touch with my team with this tends too slow. And then I also tried to make up time and I made a bells up already in front of this the spectators. But uh, anyway the car didn't uh, get in it. There's no damage on the car. It's only uh, cosmetic, so uh, we'll give it a go today. We're learning how to drive the car, it's taken us quite a few months to uh get the car right, I think we've done it now. Um, there's a lot of pressure out there, a lot of guys are throwing a lot of money at the sport at the moment and uh, we just hope we get a good result today. We did some testing uh, after the house fun got the car right. Um, we're ready to go now and it's super. Almost time for proceedings to get underway. With the start of rice, there's sugar cane, there's lots of grass and I've cut some of the grass. It's very, very slippy, especially early in the morning and with the mist there. And uh, some of the same are very close to me, so I just uh, hope they have also got brakes when I'm breaking in the front. Uh, but it puts a lot of pressure on you if you're in the front and try to stay there because you don't know where the other guys are behind you. 400 kilometers of the toughest off-road terrain. Fast sections through the sugarcane fields interspersed with tight, rough and slippery forest roads. Hannes Rubler and Richard Lee, first on the line, and with a huge advantage to boot. Not only the mist, but dust too. Next up, the Chepek Father and Sun Combo. Unbeatable so far this season in the special vehicle category in the V-Motors Challenge. The Duke Sea Brothers, not to be underestimated by any means whatsoever, but behind them a gaggle of buckies and special vehicles. A case of the charge of the Light Brigade. Seventh of the line, Saul upon Amava, Scott Abraham and the Jeep. A formidable combination. Could this be their event? John Weir Smith and Jeff Nimitz. Well placed in the carbon on Jimco, but behind them some tough contenders in the form of Bucks Carolyn, the only person to have won a special vehicle championship for drivers and co-drivers. This year he's behind the wheel of the ex Dakar Vadero. 30 minutes into the race, and predictably, Anna Tropler leads in the 3.5 liter V6 Nissan Hardbike. A change in the running order. Bucks Carolyn is up to second in the Vajero. He's taken full advantage of wrong slot by other crews in the misty and dusty conditions. The production vehicles have come into their own. The new divisions have gained a place in the Nissan Hardbody Super Truck, which was closely followed by special vehicle leader Franz Chevek Sr. and Jr. and the Jeep that had made up two places. Shamil Wariawa was next followed by Henry Kirstein, John Weir Smith and the Duplessis Brothers. <laughs> On board with Neil Woolridge and Kenny Skullhammer in the Ford Ranger as they approached the water splash. No windscreen meant that the two of them were drenched. Cliff by hell. Carlos de Abra, the leader Gavin Gray, Robin Gareth Wolf, Greg Harvey, and 
Harvey, and the gaggle of cars all mere seconds apart. The pressure was certainly on. On board with Saul from Amanda and Scott Abraham in the Jeep. Superman has the Williams and Carolyn in his sights as they approach a 90 degree left-hander. But they all one slot. Panamata takes full advantage of the situation and soon comes up on the Chepex who are leading the race. They do have one slotted and the wily old fox took full advantage of their mistake to blast into the lead. crowd at the spectator point erupted as Superman and Scott Abraham loomed into view, but many questioned whether the Jeep would maintain the pace throughout the event. A fumbling marshal and a subsequent delay did not please Funamava and he showed his displeasure in no uncertain terms. Seconds behind with the special group of category leaders, Bunchabek Senior and Junior. No delay for them as they set up in pursuit of the Jeep. <laughs> we are Smith and Minute have moved up to third place overall in the Coppenon Jimco. The driver had obviously come to grips with the unique handling of the A-arm suspension. Road racing rookie Peniel de Villiers had acquitted himself well so far and was running ahead of teammate Hannes Wobbler. <laughs> Who says American built off road trucks are not suited to South African off road racing? So far, Bonamava in the Jeep and Neil Woolridge in the Ford Ranger have proved the pundits wrong. So too had Brandon Harkers in the Nissan powered special vehicle of his own design. Frantic hand gestures indicated that he was without brakes on the Pro One Special. R.P. <laughs> Reinecke had moved up 11 places in the Castro Toyota Land Cruiser and was lying 6th in the production vehicle category after just an hour of racing. A hive of activity around the Prolong Special. Brandon Harkis and Billy Bond jump out to inspect the vehicle as Class B leader Gavin Gray exits the Marshall checkpoint. Multi-talented Bucks Carolyn and Henny Testiga charged into the Marshall point in the ex dakar Mitsubishi Pajero. Over three minutes and 39 seconds behind race leader Sara Fanamala. It's probably. So it looks like the wheel had shed off. That was going now. Still having to complete the loop, there were problems for Class D contenders Pete Hasbrook and Christo Bosch. What's good, Joe? Who are you? Was it the... Burkins and also the Sandmaster of Weigham, which is also late after Burkins, and then Tommy Sandmaster and the champion of the Schat van die Wallach, the champion in the Schlotten, and the Kinkie, and the Nungsbeer.